Hey, and welcome to my retro tech test lab where I check out old video gear from yesteryear. Today in the lab, we are testing a legendary and possibly extremely rare piece of late 80s video tech, the Toshiba SK 3D7 VHSC camcorder from 1989. This wasn't just another camcorder, my retro tech friends. It was the first consumer 3D camcorder of its kind, and it sold for, you ready for this, almost 3,500 US dollars in 1989. That's just a little over $9,000 in today's money. Now, urban legend has it only 500 units were ever sold, which we'll talk about in just a moment. But first, let's dive in and see what we've got here. You can tell right away what makes this camcorder so different. It's got two lenses. That's not just for show. These dual lenses are the backbone of the camcorder's 3D recording system. Here's how it works. Each lens captures the scene from a slightly different angle, just like your left and right eyes do. The camera then splits those two video feeds. The left lens is recorded into the odd video fields, while the right lens is saved to the even fields. So instead of a standard 2D image, you get a stacked sequence of alternating perspectives frame by frame. During playback, the video runs through a special decoder box that syncs with a pair of 3D glasses. These glasses rapidly alternate which eye can see the screen, on, off, left, right, perfectly in sync with the video fields. The result? Your brain stitches the two images together into one stereoscopic picture. And that's it. You get 3D right on your CRT TV. Oh, and fun fact, the core 3D technology behind this camcorder was still alive and kicking in 3D TVs well into the 2010s. Coming up, I will fire up the Toshiba SK 3D7 to see if this late 80s marvel still has some life left in it. Okay, so putting the 3D aspect aside, what does the Toshiba SK 3D7 offer as a standard 2D camcorder? Under the hood, it's packing two CCD image sensors, each with 300,000 pixels, which is pretty solid for a late 1980s consumer camcorder. It records to VHSC tapes using the VHS HQ format, which boosts sharpness and gives the overall video quality a slight edge over standard VHS recordings. Okay, tech speak aside, I have got some good news and I've got some bad news. First, the bad news. Unfortunately, the special adapter box, the key to making this whole 3D system work is nowhere to be found. When these SK 3D7s were originally sold, they came with the adapter box, but every unit I have seen on eBay or anywhere else is missing the adapter. And without that box, there is no 3D, plain and simple, which means unfortunately, I can't put the 3D features of this camcorder to the test. But hey, before you click away to something way more entertaining like cat videos, <laughs> I've got some good news. A technical schematic for the 3D adapter still exists. I've dropped a link to the schematic in the description below, so if you're crafty enough to try and build one yourself, go for it. And hey, if you do, let me know and we'll gladly test it right here in the lab. Up next, it's finally time to test our totally awesome Toshiba. Okay, let's see what we've got here. We are going to fire up our 3D7, aim it at the chip chart, and hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, we'll get some video out of this thing. So here we go. Uh, power, power, here we go. All right, power switch uh, is lit up. Hey, <laughs> I have got video in the viewfinder. That is awesome. But there's a weird thing going on here. Uh, let me just aim this at the chip chart. Uh, the camera is in 3D mode right now, and I see what we'll call the uh, split field image. Cam, hit the magic button for us so we can show the audience at home what I'm looking at. Okay, so 
Uh, well, that's weird. Um, my CRT in the studio is showing the split field effect. And basically it looks like two images jumping back and forth. That's the two lenses, the output of each lens jumping back and forth in this split field mode. But this, um, the LCD that I have in the studio, basically showing me the output of the retro tank. Uh, the video is, has sort of like what I would call a, a 2D image where it looks like standard def video, not with the split field effect, but it has this shimmering effect, which is really weird. So I'm guessing the retro tank cannot properly process the split field effect. And it's probably because it's in progressive mode and all sorts of other fun things, but we'll figure that out later. But uh, let me take the camcorder and let's put it into mono mode. Ah, ha, ha, ha. That is exactly what I was hoping for. Fantastic. So, uh, wow, this looks really good. Uh, right out of the starting gate, I'm just gonna try some of the other color temperatures. Okay, I think auto is probably the best setting. This is an amazing start. So, so far, we know the camera portion of this camcorder works. Now it's time to check the record deck and hopefully that works as well. Uh, so I guess we'll just Project. Mechanically, everything sounds great, which is what you want to hear when you have an old camcorder. All right. I didn't hear anything there, but not to worry. Uh, let me just uh, start recording. Here we go. Okay. All right. It's pulling the tape around the head and it's ready to go. Okay. Here we go in three, two, one, recording. Okay, so we're gonna let this record for several seconds so I can uh, lay some video down onto the tape. I'm gonna come over here, do my little trademark, you know, hand in front of, uh, <laughs> this is so dumb, but the hand in front of the chip chart, just because I wanna record some active video or not active video, but moving video. Uh, so that way I know that if I don't, um, if I leave a static image, it'll be hard to tell if the camera's recording properly. But uh, me showing my face and saying, hello, let's see what we've got here. Great. Okay, excellent. Uh, I'm going to uh, stop recording. Is that right? Yeah. And I'm going to hit the stop button on the camcorder. All right. It sounded okay there. I'm going to rewind it just a little bit and play. All right, here we go. Come on, come on, 3D7. You can do it. Oh, awesome. Wait a minute, let me adjust the tracking. All right, this is fantastic. So um, the tape's kind of yucky and old, but there I am. That is amazing. All right, good deal. Well, that's fantastic. Not only does the camera work, but the tape deck on this camcorder works. That is amazing. This is a great start. Next up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this outside or somewhere and record what I call a real world test. We'll be right back. Okay, kids, we're back, and I am sporting the ever so cool 3D glasses that would have come with your Toshiba SK 3D7 camcorder from 1989. Now these glasses, I have to say, are a little bigger than the glasses that we would have worn way back in 2010 uh, at the movies when we'd watch 3D movies uh, at the theater or at our home TV screens. Of course, that fad has come and gone. But if you wanted to try to watch 3D content from your uh, Toshiba SK 3D7, there's a big problem, and I talked about this a moment ago. Uh, you need the adapter box in order to make these things work so you can see 3D imagery on your CRT. Essentially, there's a little 1 8 inch um, uh, adapter here or uh, a little plug that you would plug into your adapter box, 
coming out of the 3D7, the video would pass through the adapter box and out to your CRT, and you would plug this into the adapter box, and what would happen is the camcorder would, or the adapter box rather, would synchronize the split field video with your glasses, as I explained before, essentially turning the lenses on and off. Um, but here they are. Kind of cool. If you had purchased these new back in 1989, if you wanted an extra pair, uh, it would have been about a hundred US dollars. Uh, and these are in really great shape. Now we just got to find somebody to make an adapter box so we can see if this whole setup works. We'll be right back. Okay, let's talk about some of the practical quirks I discovered while working with my 3D7. First, Toshiba designed this camcorder. They went with a pan-focused lens system using very small lens elements. The goal was portability, and yeah, they achieved that, but it comes with some serious limitations. There's no zoom, no focus adjustments. If you're hoping to record your kid's soccer game or a school play back in the late 80s, this was not the camcorder for you. Anything closer than about five feet won't stay in focus, and overall image quality is pretty average. That's just the reality of using such tiny optics. Trying to watch a split field image for any length of time in the viewfinder is going to cause major, major problems. If you don't get a headache, I would be surprised. And finally, this one's minor, but it's still odd. The 3D mode button isn't where you would expect it to be. You would think it would be front and center considering 3D is the whole point of this camcorder, but no. It's hidden behind this little door on the side of the 3D7. It took me a while to even find it when I was initially checking out the 3D7. So while the 3D7 was certainly a unique piece of tech for its time, it definitely came with some compromises. There's a curious backstory behind the SK 3D7. Toshiba announced the development of a consumer 3D camcorder in 1987. They showed a prototype at CES in 1988 and released the SK 3D7 in 1989. But by 1990, it had vanished. No fanfare, no follow-ups, just gone. Now, here's where it gets interesting. According to retro tech legend, only 500 of these 3D7s ever hit store shelves, making them exceptionally rare. But I haven't found any solid evidence to back up that claim. The only reference I've seen was on a Wikipedia page with the source removed. It seems like everyone's hanging their hat on that one lonely unsourced line. Now that said, I'm still digging to see if this 500 units sold story holds any water. So if you've got any clues, drop a comment below. We would love to hear from you. I'm guessing Toshiba knew they were facing an uphill battle marketing this camera. It was too expensive for most consumers, and there were already concerns about that flickering 3D effect. And let's be honest, who is really asking for a 3D camcorder anyway? Consumers didn't care much about 3D then, and they still don't. Just look at how the last big 3D wave in movies and home video came and went. Well, that wraps up another edition of our show. Thanks for joining us here in the lab. Until next time, take care, and we'll see you soon.